Well, guys, what a tremendous amount of work I got done today. So, let me go over uh, a couple things with you guys. Notice how I changed out the temporary mock-up brackets on the seat. Uh, this raised up the, uh, the base of the seat uh, inch and three quarters by just using some spare pieces of leftover strut that I had laying around. And uh, there's much more adjustability in the seat now, and there's plenty of leg room. I mean, even if you were six foot five, you would be fine driving uh, Rusty around. So, <laughs> talk about repurposing stuff. Shout out to my dad who found this uh, military panel for whatever uh, that I had sitting on my shelf, and I was just. I looked at it and I was like, holy crap, that would be perfect for the gauges instead of that big fiberglass nonsense thing. It's lightweight, it's really strong, and uh, it's the perfect size. Plus, if I want, I can mount you know two or three more gauges on there. And uh, the thing that I like best is it's adjustable, kind of like a mirror, and uh, getting the gauges wired up is gonna be super easy. I like that aspect. That makes everything really serviceable and uh, it's not blocking the windshield or anything. So I really like that. Uh, another thing my dad found was these handles and I totally forgot about these handles. I had them sitting in one of my bins and uh, I opened up one of the bins and these handles were sitting there and they're absolutely perfect for uh, setting up to get in and out of Rusty. Uh, what else did we do today? Oh, one other thing. So I had to add, I had planned on this, but I wanted to wait till I was done mocking up the seats and everything. I had to add uh, one more um, piece of Unistrut here and then a little cross brace here to make a, it's called the bucket. So if you look at the old Sprite Snowcats, the door was never full on the driver and passenger side. And I'm guessing that has something to do with the snow that gets thrown up. So I added this in here so that it was similar to the older design. And that way I have a door that's a little bit smaller. But I still have 40 inches from here to the top. And remember the motor is only 30 inches tall. So if I need to get that motor out, my thought process is this, if I take the seats out and I take or I slide the gauge panel out of the way, it'd be super easy to get that motor out. Come in with the cherry picker like this, hook it up, lift, turn, and then just back it out. So I'm hoping that's how it's going to work, but uh, I left plenty of clearance in there for that. Now. Strangely enough, this shifter came off of the Allison AT545 that I had that I got rid of because I'm not going to use it on this project. And the cable for it is the perfect length. It lands exactly where it's supposed to to make the transmission work. So I'm going to route these cables and get all these cables terminated another time. Uh, I really wanted to get the majority of the rest of this mock-up done. so. Uh, as far as like the ignition switch goes, this is a uh, motorcycle ignition switch. And since it's a motorcycle ignition switch, I was able to use the old push button start off the LMTV. So I had this sitting around in a bin, I repurposed it, and then this ignition switch I got off eBay for like 10 bucks, brand new. So I'm thinking that'll work. This setup is going to be sweet. I'm really liking the way this is turning out so far. But aside from that, man, I've been out here since 6 a.m. cranking away and getting all this stuff done. I think that's probably going to be it for this episode, guys. If you like this episode, give me a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed yet, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. But other than that, guys, I hope you're staying safe. Take care, and I'll catch you next time. See you later. Bye-bye.